Hey guys, um, I'm going to put together several messages. It may seem mixed, but they're not. So please, I don't ask often, but please just watch the entirety of this because you may miss something that's important and relevant. But the enemy is out to silence the church. Fear, intimidation, pick one. You know, I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about, guys. But so that's why we're not to be silent. We're supposed to be praying, seeking him. That's first part of this message came from something natural. But all my messages are about praying, though, honestly. But communicating with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. He wants to talk to you. I'm talking to a good Christian friend. He's a solid, solid guy. But he's like, God used to talk to prophets and Moses and all these people. But nowadays, he don't talk to anybody, pretty much, except through the Word. Well, sorry to tell you, but the Word even says he does. But, I mean, start with Genesis. Why did he want to talk to, talk to Adam in the cool of the day? Okay, it hasn't changed. God's no respecter of persons. That's, but we're not going to get it talking to him if we're not praying, communicating with him. And I'm talking about praying when no one's around a lot of times. Right now, I've got an altar. I locked myself in 16 by 70. A lot of times, a 16 by 70 storage room. That's a mess. Looks like they, when I got it, it looked like they stopped the truck, hit the brakes, and everything fell off. And it was two stories, 30 feet high. And in the front, 35 feet, no shelves, mumbly jumbly, guys. But that's, you know, but it's where I had to pray, pray through to get some breakthrough. About a third of the way, maybe done with it it's just a lot of work to organize it and arrange it how I want it get rid of all the trash actually there was two 40 yard dumpsters that I got rid of and it's been a lot of work guys but anyhow I had to pray there but what I'm saying this this happened in the natural I needed um I lost my uh charger for my tablet and I needed it well I'm used it a couple of days and it was getting low and I, I mean I looked everywhere you know and I, I probably put it somewhere in some messy place honestly couldn't find it even blame my wife a little bit not a lot but still you know it's like honey have you seen it and I'm thinking man you probably put it somewhere I probably put it somewhere honestly I always need to find somebody else to blame especially if you're married, <sighs> husband or wife, whichever. But anyhow, um, so I went to Walmart. I looked them up and, you know, there's a couple different places. I just went, you know, the cheapest place. There was $7 to, you know, somewhere 20, 30 bucks. But I just, you know, I was like, okay, that's a pretty easy fix, close and everything. And I don't like Walmart, but I go there as little as possible. But it was convenient and I needed this. So I go there and I get to the electronics area and I asked this lady, she seemed like a very nice lady, young lady. Well, not, you know, 30, so you know, to me that's young. But so she said, she took me over there and said, they're over here. Well, I spent about 15 minutes and they were all phone charger type. They all had the wrong end because my tablet takes a little bit larger than a phone. I was getting frustrated. I was like, man, I guess I, I knew where there was a couple used electronics place. I'm like, man, I didn't have to go there, asshole. You know, I brought my tablet. I'm like, you know, it should be easy to match up. But I just didn't want to take the time because I was slipping away from me some other stuff that had to get done. And I was getting aggravated. I was thinking, man, I just don't really want to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and leave. And, you know, I haven't found one. I looked through them all several times. Then I thought, well, let me just go ask, find somebody. Well, of course, couldn't find any help. When you need it, you just there was nobody around. 
So I go back and in the middle of the electronics and I go to the counter and there's the lady again. So I, I just asked her, I said, ma'am, do you know anything about tablets? You know, I said, because I had asked her at the beginning, you, you know, I need a charge for my tablet. But I said, do you know anything about them? I said, I can't find one over there. So, well, let me, you know, she took me to a different place than I was, where they all were. But there was a whole other section where they were. Some more chargers. And they had one that had three or four that were, you know, to test. You could, you know, plug in to see if it, if it worked. She plugged it in. Oh, yeah, it's this one. And she took me right to them. They were five fifty. I was looking at, I was going to buy one that was $17 just because of the convenience. I needed it and I was in a hurry and da da da. Not the 17 bucks. It was just, but you know, I was aggravated. And I didn't ask. The whole point is this Are we asking? I'm in the midst of a storm right now because I was 90, maybe even 99% in God's will. That's one of the, the warehouse I'm talking about. Out of that mess came literally hundreds of backpacks that went to a food bank where they, they don't house the homeless, but the homeless show up there because they get food, they get um, sanitary stuff, they get um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, so if you want to come down to, to, to Dallas and help me, we can minister to these people, suitcases, backpacks, just different things. You know, some I've been giving away coats, clothes, trying to not give away like piles of clothes, but just stuff that's usable. You know, it's winter, it's winter, it's cold, so coats have been a big thing, hats, jackets. But I had to sort a lot of stuff to get to it. But I've been praying as I'm going through these boxes. And seeking God for some direction. Because that's where my prayer is right now. I'm like, God, I don't want you to fix this. There's some stuff that needs to be fixed. I don't want a band-aid on it. Because what happened, guys, was I had pride in my life. Because the Lord told me to do some things. And I did them. But I didn't know there was pride in my life. And I got in the way. The sin destroyed some things. And I didn't think it was there. I'm still reeling from it, guys. Okay, I am at the, gone through the storms, most of them, but it's been because I didn't pray. The Lord dealt with me. He said, "Did you pray about it?" So that's what I'm saying. Did you pray about it? I, I'm at the tail end of a typhoon, hurricane, tornado, monsoon, whatever. All of them throw a nuclear bomb on top of it. Volcano, everything. I just came through. It's not done yet, but I'm. I see the light. Should have killed ten men. Would have killed ten men. I'm not making that up, guys. But I didn't pray about it. That was the problem. I was doing his will, or so I thought. But I was doing his will my way because of the pride. So no, I wasn't doing his will. I wasn't. I was. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. I was in his will, but I wasn't because I was doing his will my way. And pride got in the way. If I would have, you know, man, I pray all the time, guys. I'm, I'm up two, three, four, five in the morning. It's starting the day sometimes and hours of prayer and reading my Bible and studying and seeking him. I'm not doing that, say, I'm any better than anybody else. That's just because it's quiet. And I've got coffee and Jesus. All I need is a little bit of coffee and a whole lot of Jesus. He had done so much already, and the 90% that was correct and in his perfect will was on a roll. So the pride got in the way, and I thought, okay, this is cool. Man, guys, I got saved in 1980. A long journey. There are so many things I can tell you that he stripped me down of pride. That's why I didn't think I had it. So what I'm saying is, you know, we all, what's what's the sin you're hiding, guys? That's what he wants to get out of you. That's the part about the prayer piece. He wants to clean up your house. We're all looking for a way out. And he's looking for a way in. 
and you're not going to get it talking to me, watching Facebook, YouTube, listening to another preacher, your spouse, you're going to get it in a personal level because he does want to talk to you, each and every one of us. Mine, and I'm telling you, it should be yours too. The 5 a.m. prayer is important because there's nobody around. You don't have to have a phone on blaring, blabbing. You don't have to have your computer, a tablet. You don't have to pick up the newspaper. You don't even have to pick up your Bible. You need to be talking to God saying, am I supposed to be picking up my Bible now? And I do all the time. That's the first thing I do. It's like when I get up, I'm like, Lord, do you want me to, you know, go to the scripture? Do you want me to pray? What do you want me to do first? Very specific. Just learned that over this period of time. But right now, that's like, man, Lord, okay. So that's the first piece. And the real important part of it is, why does the Bible say a lot? Jesus says it a lot. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying out of the church. I'm not going to hear it with the blab and the way the media wants to silence you because the enemy's using that. Why do we have to have a bunch of truckers stand up? Where's the church? Where's the body of Christ? Where are you in this equation? I'm going to share this with you and I'm going to end with this because it's important. But the second piece of this is the silence. They want to, the enemy wants to silence us. Why? Because he doesn't want the lost saved. I've been doing it for years, guys. The whole the whole time. Look what he did to Jesus on the cross. It was to silence him. He was gonna kill him. And he did. But he didn't know that was part of God's plan. God's always undo something. We're not gonna be silenced. But we can't be barking like a barking dog at every wrong preacher or message or things we don't like. Unless it was birthed in prayer. Unless if you're really listening to God. I'm not, no, you know, I'm sat in this one, under one preacher and he's like, the mealy mouth, no more mealy mouth preachers. 1980. It's part of my message. But what they're doing is they're silencing us guys. They're trying to. And this is how one of them what I'm doing right now, the world, why do they call it the World Wide Web? It's a web of deceit. Why is it called the internet? Because it's a net to trap your mind. How many people get sucked into it? I watched kids when they were told they couldn't watch TikTok. Wall around on the floor and scream like a Comanche Indian that, that you know, that you got a, it's got a knife fight with. Come on, guys. I've said this from the beginning. Where did that come from? China. They're, it's it's integrated with demonic stuff to twist your mind and warp you. you better be careful. One of one guy. I'll, I'll say say. I think it's I think it's his wife. I'm, um, Shay Wal Walt Waters. Rich Waters is the guy. Shay Waters, I think, is his wife. And I'm sorry if I misdid that, guys. A really good post. It said, why is the root of entertainment enter? Gotta be careful what you let it enter in. Off and on button, guys. You don't like my message, turn it off or change it or ask God about it. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Actually, that's what I want you to do. Bounce it off of him. Ask him. This preacher talking about let's get about every preacher every word you hear ask it take it to take it to god jesus the holy ghost and his word and let that be true so while they're silencing us okay we all know it. i've been knowing it man guys pick one i'm saying this because i'm going to tell you a, a vision and a dream i've had and i've had a lot of them guys Way too many. That's kind of how the pride started too, because I was like, man, God, you're speaking to me in so many 
different ways and things. I can't have pride. Well, I did. So, used to get, not a lot, but enough. Sometimes there was a few of them that got, you know, hit 100 views really quick. Likes, whatever. You know, pick one. We're all on different social medias. I'm, you know, the different platforms, guys. Some views, some likes, some watches, some, you know, we all want to, you know, look and click and see who's doing what, you know. I do because I want the message to get out. But we can go to the pride issue and it to be all about that. But this is how they're silencing us, guys. The enemy is silencing us. You know, now I get a few because I confronted them, a couple of them. I said, why are you lying? Go ahead and give me your answer. I'm not going to name them because that just gets you more banned. I'm trying to get this out. I'm not trying to do anything underhandedly either. I'm just not going to say, you know, some of the key phrases they're using. It's in Isaiah, wizards that peep and mutter. Look at my, look at my post. The message was 1982. We were putting messages from the church on cassette tapes. CDs didn't even exist. Phone, cell phones barely existed. And the preacher would be up blasting the gospel. Computers were going to take over the world. Wizards that peep and mutter. How do you think they did all this bony baloney stuff with the election? Lies and deceits and twisted up stuff, guys. You know it. Everybody knows it. I'm not politicizing it. I'm saying everybody knows it. Well, this is what this is what I saw in this vision, and it was a dream and a vision. It's kind of both. That's how the Lord deals with me lately in some stuff. But so it, I can't tell you which part was which. It, it was just intertwined. But I saw this big, long black snake huge and the front part of it was up in the air it was a cobra but it was black I mean, its eyes were black they weren't like there was nothing I mean it was solid black and it was lurking in the shadows it was shadowy it was bright daylight middle of the day the sun was shining bright not a cloud in the sky but it was there was shadows it was lurking in the shadows and suddenly out of it came more snakes and they shot out and went across that was the web the worldwide web of deceit and then i saw the social media names on it one in particular and then i saw the shadow and in the shadows was a red dragon one of those kind that they use in the that China uses in their parades and stuff. It's goofy looking, you know, deceitful, weaponized, whatever. And then I, the Lord took me back even farther and I saw what was making the shadow. It was a big red dragon with his stretched out like this and he was blocking the light. So you're gonna be the light are you going to be silenced? Are you going to clam up, shut up, cow down, chicken out, whatever? Are you going to do what God told you? But you're not going to do what God told you. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word if you're not praying. Those are the two pieces. You got nothing to say. You might as well be silent if you're not praying about it. Seeking His will. You wonder why I post different people on some of these sites. Man, I got one, and I don't. I know he won't mind because he doesn't. He, he, man, he is. He, he, he is one of the sharpest knives in there. The guy's really brilliant. He's smart. He's a software engineer. He's a very smart guy. Got a good brain on his head, in his head. He's gifted with that. But he doesn't have pride. David J. Akron. Read his, Read some of the stuff I put out there about from him. It's really good stuff, guys. It's deep in depth. And there's another guy I ran into at one of the food banks. And yeah, I go to some of them, but I wait in line like everybody else. But I'm helping my neighbors who have, who have skin cancer and can't work. It's really brutal. 
he can, but man, he was out there in the sun working diligently as a 60 year old guy. To, you know, long story, I'm not going to broadcast it because I don't want, you know, I'm just not, but I'm helping him. Ninety percent of what I get goes to them, and then there's other people too, and I just pass it out. I get it, and pass it out. Good stuff too, and it's been helping them because they can't, you know, it helps them instead of having to pay grocery bill money, they can pay bill money. They can have, you know, they, they I mean they're struggling, so that's cutting off some of their, you know, quite a bit of their stuff that they, you know, so and they can, they can feed their feed their grandchildren. And they're taken care of. But what I'm saying, guys, is they want us to be silent. Why? Because it is the end times. It might be today before this message ends. It could be 20 years from now. You don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm not extending it or making it imminent either. The Bible says that no man knows the hour. But it's close, I think. Closer, way closer than we were. But they want to silence us because the devil's behind it. It's demonic. Like I said, I didn't catch this. I prayed about this. The Lord said, it's the worldwide web of deceit. Why is it called a web? Because it's to ensnare you. It's a no, what's the scripture? It's no, man, no, so, no good soldier entangles himself with the cares of this life. It's twisted up, demonic, all about you. Where did selfies come from? All this, you know, I watch some of it. It's like mindless stuff. That's, well, some kids were listening to one. I was like, man, I was like, listen to the guy for about three minutes or not even. I was like, dude, shut up. It's just twisted up, mindless stuff garbage you know you're in a pile of bubble gum doing something stupid or whatever you know no wonder these kids are brainless been sucked up into just you know and caught fun and you know entertainment and man how many people have you almost run over at the store because they got their face stuck in their cell phone their thousand dollar cell phone it's more important than than the word of god You know exactly what I'm talking about, guys. Who cares about that? You know what your dinner looked like that you, you know, that you ate at Denny's. I'm not knocking people that do it, kind of, him, but you know, it's like, man, guys, it just got so far out of control because they want to silence us. They want, they want our brains to be mush. Like I said, why does it take a bunch of truckers to say, hey, no, where's church? The body of Christ. Busy arguing and bickering with each other about theological differences. There shouldn't be any theological differences, guys. I'm just telling you, study your study your Bible for yourself. That's the beauty of the cross. That we got an advocate with the Father. That we can go to the we can go and say, "What would you do, Jesus? What would you do, God? The Holy Ghost to lead, guide, and direct you." But if you're not filled with them, and He ain't entered in, because you're looking for a way out, because you haven't prayed. Oh, I'm not, this is not you versus me. I just told you, man, my, the flames are still 20 feet high and my pride getting burned off my flesh. I can still smell it. it. Hurts. I got one guy, two, but one guy, still so angry at him. The Lord hasn't let him call me. He won't either, honestly, because he only called when he needed something, wanted something, and he pretty twisted up. I don't want to be angry at the guy. And um, this is, I'm going to end with this. This is a canned answer. Turn the other cheek. I'm hearing that from a lot of different people. Just turn the other cheek. Move on. Uh, okay, well, yeah, all that's good. And I need to. But you know what? That's that's the problem that we have. We take, I don't know, people that will beat you to death with one scripture. We'll take it out of context. Completely out. You got to take the Bible in its entirety. Oh, yeah. Turn the other cheek. That's a great, you know, cop-out kind of. And can be. Great to follow it, too. But 
write about it. That's what came up. Five wise and the five foolish virgins. And the five wise entered in. And the five foolish got to the door and couldn't enter in. Said, Man, we did all this wonderful, you know, Shazam stuff in your name. Raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out the devil, did blah, blah. They had no oil. They hadn't prayed. They weren't filled with the, they weren't filled with anything but junk. That's what the, that's what the silence business is all about. It's not silences so that they can bark louder and just fill your mind with trash and turn your brain into a marshmallow, marshmallow, whatever. They didn't enter in. What did tell them? Spark, bro, I didn't even know you. Your work was an iniquity of sin. So yeah. Getting sin out hurts. Getting pruned hurts. Getting my behind whipped hurts from the Lord. Still hurts. Holding up in a... Man, if you saw the warehouse, I'd be like, man, it, it, what are you doing here? Holding the Lord. Needing his guidance and his direction. Because he said he, those that he loves, he chastises. Do, do you want to enter in or do you want to you try to get to the door with a bag of sin? You ain't going to get in. Time to let him in, enter in, not out, not trying to get out of what you're in. Because most of it's, you know, the jailhouse salvation type garbage. You, you got caught and you just want to get out of the pain and the suffering and the punishment and the stuff that you did. Well, there is a way out. But it's not a way out, it's a way in. Let me rephrase that. He wants to enter in. He wants to clean the house up. Man, when you get Jesus in your heart and when the Holy Ghost comes in, there ain't no room for sin in the end. That's one of my messages, guys. I don't want our wealth and fame, but our guilt and shame. He wants to go to the dirtiest, darkest spots in our heart that we don't even go to. We've got locked up. 18,000 padlocks buried under a nuclear silo or whatever, concrete silo. We won't even go there. That's where he wants to go. Why? Because he wants to set you free. He's cleaning the house. So are you praying? And if you're praying, are you listening? Or are you listening to the world so they can silence you? So you can have no effect and not be the light and maybe not even get in. I don't want to wish that upon anybody. I'm not trying to proclaim it on anybody. I'm not going to stamp that distress on you and the stuff on you. I'm not going to do that. That's not my, that's not my point. That's not Jesus' point either. To set you free. You can't set you free if you're just blinded by it and you, your head's a big mushroom, a marshmallow, whatever marshmallow. You're just so full of junk and everywhere you go, people talk about the stupidest stuff. Literally. Honestly. Listen to some of the conversations. It'll, man, make you sick. It's in the church, in the political system, in the world, in the schools. That's why I'm going to end with this, I promise, because it's getting too long. See you at five in the morning tomorrow. Pray with me as a nation, as God's people. You might be in a different nation. You might be in some part of the world. I, let's pray together, guys. The importance of that early morning prayer is the silence. God has so he can talk to you without being distracted without your mind being off into something else hard to do I get it love you guys see you soon